So in this video, we'll be going through a really interesting integer optimization of Python. Uh, as per official C documentation of Python, it suggests that the current implementation keeps an array of integer objects for all integers between minus 5 and 256. When you create an int in that range, as in in the range minus 5 to 256, you just get back a reference to the existing object. What does this mean? This means that Python is creating singleton instances of minus of all the integers in the range minus 5 to 256 right really interesting so instead of creating new objects every time python is pre-allocating all the integers in the range minus 5 to 256 and whenever we need an integer in that range instead of creating a new instance it would give us an existing pre-allocated instance right so let's see this in action and just verify our facts uh, and in this one what we'll be doing is we'll be going through cpython source code like always and find out exactly how python does it but before we do it let's first ensure that uh, what we see is actually right uh, what i'll do it is i'll create i'll take a variable 256 a equal to 256 b equal to 256 and i do a is b and it gives me true I say a equal to 57, b is 257, I do a is b, it gives me false. So this is indeed true that uh, the value 256, a and b, so when I do a is b, it just checks that if both the variables point to the same object or not. And uh, for two, for the value 256, a is b is true, while for 257, a is b is actually false. This implies that Python indeed is uh, is somehow actually caching this integers so i'll do a pi long from long so that we understand how it is actually doing so the function is defined in long object dot h so it's definite so uh, this is where it is declared and it would be defined in long object dot c and pi long from long pi long from long where it is defined where it is defined let us quickly converge upon that. Yeah, here it is. Right, line number 173. Uh, I've taken the latest pull of CPython FYI. So now what? So uh, given this function, uh, so here when we start going through this function, we immediately encounter this line. What it says? It says that a small int. So uh, the this function is basically trying to create a pylong object from a long variable so this long is basically c c is type long so from i well which is of type long it is trying to create the pi long object so it checks if my i well is actually a small int if it is small int then it it invokes a function called get small int and immediately returns if not then in the below code it says that it be, it is basically allocating the new long object right so which means the magic is happening right here so because this is where it is checking if it is a small int or not if it is small int then just do a get small int uh, so basically then it invokes get small int it must be doing some lookup or something and it simply returns from here so let's first see what is small int is so when i open is small int the macro definition what we get is a small int it checks for mm, minus n small negants less than equal to i well and and i well less than n small posints so let's see what n small negants is yeah so n small negants is 5 while n small posints is 257 so n small negants instead of it's not minus 5 but it's 5 while n small posints is 257 and this is really well implemented so what it has done is a small int the macro definition it attaches a negative sign over here so instead of setting n small negants to be equal to minus five, it has set it as phi we'll see why uh, why the python code developers have actually chosen to do so uh, and here it checks for minus n small negant basically minus five less than equal to i well and and i well less than n percent which is equal to 257 what does this mean it means that it is doing a minus 5 so minus 5 is inclusive while 257 is exclusive so minus 5 to 256 is where a small int macro would would 
so the evaluation of this statement would become true uh now what now the next thing is we have pi long from long yeah this is where we started from so if a small int is true so if i am asking for an integer in the range minus 5 to 256 both inclusive it would invoke this function get small int and it is passing i well to it so i will go into get small int and one see what it does so get small int uh, it first asserts that it is small int that's okay and then it invokes a function called pi long underscore get small int underscore internal uh, uh, gets pi object and increases the reference and it returns it so the magic would be happening in pi long underscore get small int internal i'll open it uh, let's go through this one by one so what it does is it gets the interpreter state so something like a global interpreter state or something then it asserts that my number indeed exists in that range so too many error checks happening which is good thing to make things robust then it computes the index and then it uh, fetches the object from this small ints array at this at this at this very index and then it returns the object so the small ints in the in the uh, uh, so the small ints array inside interp or basically the interp as the global interpreter state uh, in which it is holding all the objects all the pi objects within this array and what this function is doing is it is computing the index uh, given the value it is computing index to be equal to my uh, uh, to be equal to pi small negants plus value and uh, this is what the beauty is so the uh, recall that pi small negants was stored as was defined as 5 and not minus 5 because of that what we can directly do is to compute the index at which the value would be stored we can directly do uh, uh, we can directly do pi small so basically pi and small negants plus value so doing 5 plus something instead of doing minus 5 and then multiplying it by minus 1 to make it positive and then doing plus something which is obviously much more computationally intensive what we are actually or what uh, a python core dev have actually done is they have taken uh, pi small negants to be positive and just by and just while comparing they are prepending a negative sign so minus x right so basically minus 5 is what you need during comparison and for every other computation out there they are just utilizing uh, the positive value so now that we have the index uh, it just goes through this small int array and it gets the object and it returns so let's see how the small int array is defined so yeah indeed small int is an array of pi long objects of length pi n small negants plus pi n small posint so basically 5 plus 257 is how it has actually computed this thing so pi plus 257 is equal to 262 and so the array is of size 262 within which it would store the the pi long objects from minus 5 to 256 both inclusive so now let's see how small int is actually populated because uh, there has to be a place where it is actually initializing this thing so i'll look for all the references of small int where it does what it does uh, get small int this we already went through in long object dot c this is comment that's okay and yeah so this is an interesting function what it does is it says that the function name is pi long int uh, sorry pi long init so this looks like an initialization function of long module and what it is doing is it is going through all values from 0 to n small negants plus n small posings basically uh, all possible values that needs to be cached uh, this is more like an index to it uh, now what it is doing is it is then uh, uh, it is then actually finding out the value that needs to be saved so a uh, kind of like 0 to 2 uh, uh, 0 to 262 will be mapped to minus 5 to 250 uh, 256 right and uh, uh, this is where that happens so the i well would have values from minus 5 to 256 but my i is from 0 to 262 right so now given this i well what it is doing is it is actually storing here so in the interp arrow small ints of i i is the index so uh, index is from 0 to 262 and within which it is storing v v is the pi long object which is being created 
so uh, during this initialization it is indeed creating uh, uh, it is indeed creating long objects for the range minus 5 to 256 and holding these objects for in the array from index 0 to 262 right so uh, uh, basically this is where uh, our cache is being initialized right so next time when someone asks for it it just computes the index goes to that particular location fetches the object and returns it right so yeah this is how it is doing uh, uh, where is it exactly storing the value uh, in the pylong object so it is happening right here right so it is storing this i well it is uh, it is typecasting it into some digit and storing it in ob digits of zero these are internals of how pylong object is implemented i have written a detailed article about implementation of pylong you can so i'll uh, link the article in uh, the description down below uh, feel free to check it out you'll learn a lot about internals and how python actually implements long integers but uh, yeah basically this is the gist of the entire thing right so uh, basically this is how uh, basically this is where our cache is being initialized with all values from minus 5 to 262 oh sorry minus 5 to 256 my bad uh, now what now what we do is we have looked for all no we haven't looked for all instances of small int the next instance is this what it does is it does it is there in the function called pylong dot uh, pylong underscore finny looks like something to finish about uh, uh, more like a destructor sort of thing well it is iterating for all the elements in the array small ints and just doing a pie clear basically deallocating everything that it is allocated so this makes sense now coming back to the place where we started and what we do is pylong just waiting for it to come yeah here so we started from pylong underscore from long and we saw how it did this let's look for get small int and see where all uh, it is using this so get small int is using uh, is being used for pylong from uint basically unsigned integer makes sense anytime we are we are trying to create a pylong object from an unsigned integer we are checking this thing pylong from long long so uh, from the value long long int if you are trying to uh, create a pylong object at that time it is doing the small int check and then returning small int so primarily every time we are trying to create a pylong object we would be seeing this sort of check from uh, pylong underscore from size st makes sense so anytime we are creating a pylong object from anything we are adding this check where we are checking if it is a small int if it is a small int then just return a get small int right so use the existing reference instead of creating a new thing out of it so yeah basically so so yeah basically this is it and now we know how python actually optimizes integers how python caches it and we have seen the internals of it so i hope this has added some value i hope you are now much more comfortable browsing through the code base and understanding how python implements login uh, i would heavily recommend go through the article which i'll be putting in the description to understand the internal workings of pylong it's really fascinating and it's really amazing on how python has optimized the storage of long end because typically python does not bind or it or it does not have any limitation on how big an integer can be so that's a really fun implementation i might cover it in some future video but meanwhile you can you should obviously go through the article uh, which is very detailed you'll it is a fun read uh, so you'll have a you'll have a fun and a great time reading that uh, what i'll do it is i'll also uh, put article for this topic uh, about uh, integer caching in python in the description below uh, feel free to skip through it and uh, see see a few things here and there uh, i've also done a really interesting benchmark uh, uh, not really a benchmark but more of a visualization on how many object references are there for values from the range minus 5 to 256 so that we understand that yeah indeed these objects are being used those many times and they require to be cached so one main reason why python did caching of small integers because we uh, 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 because core developers actually observed that smaller indexes or smaller integer values are used quite a lot as compared to larger values because they are used in indexing they are used in some basic computations and whatnot 
so smaller integers are used at much more places so it made sense to not allocate those objects again and again but rather reuse it so they they kind of made it single time the really fun way to optimize a language uh so yeah primarily this is it for this video uh, if you guys like this video found this thing helpful give this video a big thumbs up if you guys like this channel give this channel a sub and i'll see you in the next one thanks at all